you probably know this by now but anyway let me just remind you if you want to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second you divide by 3.6 and then the other way around if you want to convert meters per second to kilometers per hour you multiply by 3.6 and we are going to use that to answer 3.1 the question says that let's convert 135 kilometers per hour to meters per second again to convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second you divide by 3.6 so let's go ahead and do that 135 divided by 3.6 is equals to 37.5 meters per second so instead of having kilometers per hour we now have meters per second by just dividing with 3.6 let's move to 3.2 determine the velocity of car b while trying to avoid car a let's go through our scenario so we can see what is happening here car a driving at 135 kilometers per hour approaches a stationary car b the driver of car b notices that car a is approaching him at a very high speed the driver of car b reacted suddenly by accelerating his car from rest at 1.5 meters per second squared for 11.5 seconds after 11.5 seconds car b continues driving right so 3.2 again determine the velocity of car b while trying to avoid car a we're going to use equations of motions here but before we decide which equation we are going to use we need to know which information we have it is the information we have that is gonna guide us towards the right equation to use so what do we have here we have an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared we have time delta t which is equals to 11.5 seconds we have an initial velocity because we are told that the car starts moving from rest so the initial velocity vi is equals to zero meters per second so you need to remember that every time when a vehicle starts moving from rest then the initial velocity is zero meters per second what we are looking for is vf we have one, two, three, four equations of motions. So let's go ahead and find out which equation we can use. Let's look at equation one. So in equation one, we're looking in for VF. We have VI, which is zero meters per second. We have an acceleration and we have the time. So we need to go no further because we can see that equation one has all the variables we have. So let's just go ahead and use that equation. So we say that vf is equals to vi plus a delta t is the equation we are going to use and then the velocity final will be equal to the initial velocity which is zero plus the acceleration which is 1.5 the acceleration is 1.5 meters per second squared multiply by the time which is 11.5 if you put that in your calculator, you should get a final velocity of 17.25 meters per second. And this right here, it is the answer to 3.2. Let's look at 3.3. But let's take our equations of motions with us because uh, we might need to use equations of motion in 3.3. Right. So the question is saying, how far has car B driven after 11.5 seconds? So again, let's jot down our information. We have delta T, which is equals to 11.5. We have our initial velocity, which is equals to zero. We have our final velocity, which is equals to 17.25. We're looking for delta X. Let's go to our equations of motions and see which one we're going to use. If you look at equation one, we don't have delta x. So we cannot use that equation because how are we going to get delta x when the equation itself doesn't even have delta x. And then in equation two, we have delta x, which is what we're looking for. And then vf, we have it. We have vi is zero. Uh, two is a constant and we have delta t. So as you can clearly see, we are going to use the second equation because it has the variables we have and are looking for. So every time when you're solving these kind of questions, you jot down your information 
and then guided to which equation of motion you're supposed to use. So now we're going to say that uh, delta x is equal to vf plus vi divided by 2 multiplied by delta t. So delta x will be equal to what is vf? vf is 17.825. We calculated it in the equation above plus vi which is equal to 0. Everything divided by 2. Multiply by delta t, which is 11.5. Uh, if you put that in your calculator, you will get delta x being equal to 99.19 meters. Well, a displacement is a vector, so let's give a direction. If we agree that this is west and this is east, we can see that that is 99.19 meters to the east to the east let's do the same for 3.2 our velocity final is 17.25 meters per second to the east that is because velocity is a vector and not a scalar right let's move to 3.4 the driver of car a suddenly hit the brakes and managed to stop after 40 meters what acceleration does car a experience to come to a standstill after four seconds Let's conceptualize. Let's try envision what is happening here. So the car A was traveling at a velocity of 37.5 meters per second to the east. So the initial velocity is 37.5 meters per second. And what is being said here in 3.4 is that in four seconds, the car comes to a stop. It comes to a standstill. So at four seconds, we have a velocity of zero meters per second but then at the same time during that four seconds the car covers a distance or it has a displacement of 40 meters so we have 40 meters here and then this is all happening in four seconds well i want to let you know right now that this is actually impossible there is no way that the car can start with a velocity of 37.5 four seconds later it has a velocity of zero meters per second and have covered a distance of 40 meters in four seconds it is actually impossible for that to happen that is why if you use different formulas you're gonna get different answers because you can say that vf is equal to vi plus a delta t we have vf because the car is coming to a stop after 40 meters our vf is equal to zero what else do we have we have vi it is 37.5 we have our time which is four seconds so we can find our acceleration using this formula but you can also say that vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2a delta x if you use this formula uh, we have vf squared we have vi squared we have delta x you gotta find a different value the last formula you can use here is delta x is equal to vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared if you use this formula also you're going to get a different value because this equation doesn't make any physical sense